Welcome, my beautiful brothers and sisters, to this channeled message. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be in this message, but I really wanted to come on here and talk to you all. It's currently 6.53 a.m. I probably have been up for uh, the past hour or so, and I kind of found myself interesting enough, sort of at the end of my rope, in the most beautiful, miraculous way possible. And I do feel like there has been something that has clicked within me, something that has been, I want to say cured, but I think I'm starting to understand what it means to be cured. Because to be cured is doesn't mean that you will never suffer from the ailment of something anymore. It doesn't mean that the ailments disappear. It means that you have the most efficient means at returning to your baseline frequency of joy, fulfillment, passion, innovation, and having the courage to be authentically yourself. I, I think what happens is that when we try to cure things, we try to perfect it so this thing never appears again. And that's obviously not the case. We even have physical anecdotal evidence with the surfacing of these diseases, you know, like measles and polio and stuff like that. We felt like we had cured it with vaccinations and vaccinations are, you know, that's one another one of those tricky subjects and stuff like that. I'm sure many people who might listen to this type of video or are in the new, new age community might have their opinions on vaccinations and all that sort of stuff. But it is a technology, I'm digressing a little bit, it is a technology that has cured and has become an efficient means at, you know, curbing these things, although I don't think it's the most efficient means. But anyways, I digress. I wanted to come on here and talk to you all about what I've been going through and kind of just open up. You see, I get psychically attacked quite a bit. And I realized that I had built up a defense mechanism for the psychic attacks that I would be feeling that I have felt over the past 10 years, especially since Chiron has been in Pisces. And I wasn't aware of it until literally probably within the past hour or so that the way that I was going to make it through this transit was by something that I did in my childhood that I had no idea was going to help me get through it. And that was this whole invention of this spirits and being within me of this sort of protection, this entity that allowed me to be able to really make it through just about any opposition I came up against. And even oppositions that weren't as easy as kind of flicking my wrist and just destroying them with the giant chi ball of energy, that I would even have a method of returning back to a state so I can restructure myself, revamp myself, transform, essentially a state where I can kind of go back to, and I'm thinking of a jellyfish, the way that a jellyfish, like an adult jellyfish or a mature jellyfish, actually has the ability to return back to a polyp state if the conditions are harsh, but it's able to go back to this polyp-like state and remain in that state until conditions are ripe again for it to remature into an adult jellyfish. I actually had this ability in this being that I created or that was a guardian of mine, which now I realize has kind of left me in a sense. And it was actually, that was actually built into the narrative. That was actually built into the narrative that this being would sort of leave me. But 
would also leave me with the seed to kind of create my own version of the sort of protection that this being gave me. And I think it's just now that I'm realizing that this guardian actually did leave me. It left me um, several years ago. It left me um, back in, I would say, 2016. 20, it left me in 2016. Didn't really um, come into, I'm not going to even say the awareness. I'm going to say more or less, it didn't really drop into my subconscious until about 2017. And I'm just now realizing it now. And this guardian of mine, I call him the Dark Dragon. This guardian of mine protected me, and it was a defense mechanism for any type of um, rejection that I may feel, and how a lot of times if I felt rejection in the external world or the outer world, or if I felt shame, or if I felt like I wasn't good enough, I would go to my inner world and create these very extravagant situations where I was protecting people, saving people, I was the hero, I was a, a social justice warrior of the highest kind in my imagination. But a lot of these imaginations stopped several years ago. But I still believe that this dragon kind of was there. I even had this moment where in the narrative of this story, I transmuted the dark dragon into something called the light dragon. So I found like the other side of this dragon. And I'm realizing that even that part has left me. And what's happened is I have been kind of dropped into a sort of a blank canvas and I had to rediscover who I was. I'm being very open with you guys right now, and I have to be because I would be doing myself and you a disservice if I wasn't. I made a video recently where I was talking about, you know, I needed to kind of take a step back from YouTube, and I realized that that decision, while I didn't make that out of love, it had just a hint more of fear in it. And that's why I have to retract that video. I'm going to keep it up here, but I have to retract my intention in that video because I was doing that because I was afraid of being seen. Because I know, I know, and I really do believe wholeheartedly that when I make these videos and when I put myself out there, I'm not just being seen by you all. I'm being watched by other spirits and entities. And I know that they leave comments on my videos, they leave comments in my consciousness, and they then not not all of them are not all of them have good intentions. So this doubt would creep up and I will be fed these beliefs that I'm not enough, that people might not understand me, wondering why I haven't grown as fast as I want to but then when I look at this year and honestly at this point looking at the date it's been about a year since I've done this channel and it's probably the longest I've ever held a particular channel on YouTube which is a very it's a game of courage because you really are putting yourself out there you really are unlike a lot of the other platforms it is a platform where it, I feel like it allows for the greatest amount of self-discovery, in my personal opinion. And when I made that video saying I needed to take time to explore other areas, the truth of the matter is that I was using it to cover up my own laziness. Because I have plenty of time to do that. I just needed, an, I needed a, a convenient excuse to retract or what I believe was to retract from YouTube because obviously as you can see I still make videos <laughs> um, I just haven't been doing the moon transit videos and I'm still going to wait and honor until I get back to the moon and Aries so but 
I'm not going to make the excuse anymore that I need to commit time to other areas of my life when I already had the time to do so. I use that as a convenient excuse to cover up the fact that who I thought I was was being fucking destroyed. It was being, and it is being fucking destroyed. I would be doing you all a disservice if I did not make these videos, if I did not talk about these transits more in depth, if I did not really give you my all, and if I allowed myself to succumb to the fear of not, not really, and here's the thing, I don't receive a lot of criticism yet on the, um, in like the YouTube comments, stuff like that, because the channel is relatively small. I noticed that a lot of times what happens is that you don't really get that until the channel gets big or so. But I have been receiving criticism from the spiritual realm. And I'm going to say fuck that criticism. The reason why I'm saying that is because I have been concerned about these beings that aren't even in the arena of what I'm trying to do. They're just like, it's like when you, it's like two people who are in the re arena boxing. And instead of me boxing the other person in the arena, I have been so concerned about what's outside that arena and boxing hecklers and people who are throwing shade. And I'm sure I even receive this shade from people in my real life that won't say anything on my videos or that won't really say anything about what I'm doing. Because I know there are a lot of people who don't understand it. They don't get it. And I need to be okay with that. And I don't need to silence myself over that. Now, I'm not saying I won't ever take time to recharge my batteries because I think we all need that but I, I look around and I see people who are super fucking consistent and I'm, I have to ask myself okay these people they have to have time to recharge their batteries as well but what makes them so goddamn persistent what makes them so consistent and so efficient at what they do that they just seem like they just don't run out of energy and I'm, like I said, I'm sure they take time to rest, to recharge, to regroup. They have to, right? But what is it that allows these individuals to just keep going and to keep putting out content? Because they have to go through stuff just like me, right? They can't not have issues either, right? But I think what these individuals have is that they will not allow themselves to be silenced. While we are here on this in this 3D human experience on this earth, the 3D version of this space and location, mind you, because there are courses of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, D, twelve, up, you know, through D version of this space and location that we in the 3D call Earth, right? But so long as we are in this 3D version of this space and location that we call Earth, the only time that we will be silenced will be in death. But even then, there are people who still influence, inspire, and motivate from beyond the grave. So really... I can't silence myself anymore. I can't hold myself back anymore out of this illusion that, or while perpetuating the illusion that I'm taking time for myself, you know, and I will take time for myself. I will take time to recharge my batteries. But I won't lie to you all and use this convenient excuse that I want to take some time back and take a step back because I need to 
get into some more of my other hobbies when I have plenty of time to do that. There's a lot happening in the astrology right now, guys. There's a lot happening. A lot of beautiful changes. And I have even have found myself kind of swept away recently, especially over the past two to three weeks. The like February for me has been a journey of self-discovery, undoing, rebuilding, undoing, rebuilding, undoing. It's like I it's like I feel like I take 10 steps forward and 10 steps back. And I'm finally ready to take one step forward. Fuck taking 10 steps. I just want to take one step. And sometimes that's where you have to be. You know, we feel like we have to take so many different steps forward that sometimes just that one step forward is enough of a change, is enough of a um reminder that we are worthy of that change, that we are worthy to live that best quality life that is inherently ours. The fact that we can conceive it, the fact that we can imagine it, means that it is already a part of us. The issue that we discover in this 3D version of this space and location that we call Earth is that we have a buffer effect we have sort of actually, I want to use this term trickle down economics, where it falls into place slower than how we want. Because our spirits love speed, they love efficiency, they love quickness, they love nimbleness. But what happens is that the puzzle pieces usually fall into their respective places at their own pace. And we cannot force the issue, we cannot force them to fall any faster. But what we can do is that we can make it so that we embrace the entirety of the journey and not just embrace the goal that we want, the destination that we want. We embrace and we open up and we become vulnerable to the entirety of the journey. So a lot of times what happens is that people will numb themselves to the steps in between where they are right now and the goal that they want. They focus so much on what they want and what they feel they need that they forget about the steps that it takes to get there. And they numb themselves to the fact that they have to be vulnerable enough and honest enough with themselves that it will take steps. We can't just jump to the top of the staircase. Not yet. We can fly and we can levitate, but we can't do that. And even when we actually learn how to physically you know, jump from the bottom of the stairs to the top of the stairs without touching any of those middle steps, there's still going to be another, uh, there's still going to be some other challenge. There's still going to be another way that that whole motif is translated. There will be. We are in very powerful shifting times right now. The old world is dead. The old you is dead. And you are being reborn. Everyone is. Everyone's being reborn right now. Everyone's being reborn right now. And being reborn can be difficult. It can hurt. It can be painful. And that's why you're going to see especially, especially this week, and really especially this year, you're going to see a lot of people tossing around their sensitivities and expecting other people to be responsible for them. Expecting other people to do the spiritual work. Expecting other people to do the integral work at embracing the sensitivities and also Using them in such a way that enables one 
to still move forward with the confidence and courage of their character and not totally allow themselves to get washed away by the sensitivity. And when, even when I say that, we still have to allow ourselves to get washed away from time to time. Because if we don't, we don't grow as a person. We don't evolve as a person or as a collective. But right now, a lot of the healing has actually shifted from the collective to the person. So the collective has already been healed. The collect We don't need to really worry about the collective like we did before. Now a lot of this attention is going to be shifted to the person, to the I am. And I'm really referring to this Chiron shift, which I'm going to be making a video about this later. I'll be making a live where I go live and talk about the weekly transits and some of these major transits. At the time of me making this, Chiron is at zero degrees, zero minutes of Aries. And Venus is conjunct Saturn at 16 degrees in Capricorn. One plus six is seven, which is spirit. And then zero is this sort of ultimate boundary, which is actually ruled by Scorpio energy. And it's interesting how there's mutual reception between Scorpio and, uh, well, interesting enough. Yeah, there's mutual reception between Scorpio and zero degrees of Aries in a sense. Even though it's technically a king kunx, but depending upon which way you look at it, if you look at, say, the edge of Scorpio, those final degrees of Scorpio, it tri it's trining it right now, actually. And the edge of Scorpio is a scary place. Take it from someone who is a 24 degree Scorpio and whose progressed son has progressed over that edge. And progressed over that edge at a very early age, mind you. But the edge of Scorpio is a scary place because it is this place where you, it is this place of ultimate vulnerability. It really is. Because what does a scorpion do? A scorpion creates a trap door that when other beings walk across it, it's able to pull it into its trap and under the hot sand, engulfed, and it, it kills its prey. It stings. And the edge of Scorpio is a trap door to the rest of who you are. That's what the edge of Scorpio is. And it's scary as fuck. But what's on the other side of that trapdoor? Sagittarius. And the rest of the zodiac. The upper half of the zodiac. The last four signs of the zodiac. That's what's on the other side of that Scorpio energy. And with Chiron just now coming off that 29 degree mark, and just now coming into Pisces, and, I mean coming into Aries, and it won't be in Pisces again for another 40 plus years, guys. Another 40 plus years. And it's the wounded healer. So that means that we have shifted our attention as far as healing these major wounds and traumas from the collective, which is Pisces, to the individual, which is Aries. We have shifted it. We have healed, believe it or not. We have healed. So there's nothing really to worry about when it comes to the collective. There's nothing really to worry about when it comes to, you know, whether or not we can achieve this sense of, I guess, world peace. And I don't even think a, I don't even think a world that has, I don't even think a place that has world peace or a quote unquote paradise is without its problems. I think the biggest delusion that we have, especially in the spiritual New Age community, which I kind of feel like I have like one foot in and one foot out of it, only because there are certain motifs and stuff like that within the community that, honestly, the only reason why it is the way that it is is because it's juvenile. And when I say juvenile, I simply mean underdeveloped. An underdeveloped understanding of what this really means. An underdeveloped understanding of what it really means to have peace on earth. Because I don't think peace on earth is without its problems and issues and challenges. 
Because if that was the case, then this whole experience, this whole thing, this whole even cycle of life, death, experiences of the universe, it would cease to exist because there will be nothing more to explore. And quite frankly, it will become boring as fuck. So we have we need instigation. We need complication. We need challenge. And right now, this is this is now the moment, seriously, in coming into this new astrological year. The sun is now in Pisces. So for the next 30 days, we are really going to become illuminated to our own healing and the collective healing. We're going to become illuminated to it. And our mind is going to try and figure out and conceptualize and rationalize this healing. And we're not going to figure it out. We can't figure it out. All we can do is sort of allow our minds to be malleable enough to open up to the fact that we actually did heal ourselves. And we have to be okay with that. We have to be okay with not knowing how we did it. We have to be okay with the miracle that we have been bestowed and gifted. Sometimes we are, we feel like we're not worthy of miracles. And with this upcoming Mercury retrograde, there's going to be a lot of that sentiment where we realize that we just went through a great miracle and we wonder if we're worthy enough for it. But obviously it happens, so we are. Like I said, Venus is Saturn at 16 degrees right now, which adds to a 7, which many, which is the number in numerology for Neptune and Pisces energy, so spirituality. And you got to think, the Venus is, of course, our value system. Saturn are our challenges and how we overcome them. So this is really a moment where we value these challenges and we value this receptive quality and we open up to the spiritual warrior that we are. This new astrological year coming up, when the sun goes back into Aries, is the year, the revival of the spiritual warrior. And the spiritual warrior, this new spiritual warrior, is not one who backs down from simple misunderstanding from juvenile misunderstanding misunderstanding I say inner because I've been I've been trying to say understanding instead of overstanding lately or um, understanding excuse me I'm just saying understanding I am a spiritual warrior, and I will not back down because I am not one who is going to be silenced, and I will not silence myself. I may die tomorrow, but I know my, my videos and what I've done will still continue to affect many people. Whether it affects millions somehow or affects ten, I know that it will affect somebody. And that's important to me. So while I am here, I might as well do everything in my power to continue to embrace and expose myself via vulnerability and expose myself with courage, my message, and why I'm here. As I said, I would be doing your, I would be doing you a disservice. I would, I would be doing myself a disservice. I would be doing my guides a disservice. I would be doing source perspective a disservice by Silencing myself in the way that I did recently. Because it was a move out of 
protection for myself. I will have compassion for myself. I was trying to protect myself, actually. But also, I was afraid to really dive into this, to really show you guys who I am, to really get in there. Because since I made that video, it's not like I've done much writing. I had thoughts about writing. I even had this whole new conception of a story that came up. A really good one, actually. And I'm realizing, I think the reason why I haven't been writing as much is because a lot of my ideas, I haven't seen them before. And it scares me because I'm like, okay, I've never even, actually, I've never completed a novel. I've written a poetry book, and I know that there are certain, I guess you could say, techniques and mechanics and writing, whatever like that. But as far as, like, what I'm actually wanting to create, I haven't seen it before. And that scares the fuck out of me. It does. And damn it, that's a good thing. Because if it doesn't scare you, it's probably not big enough. I love you all. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. And you are going to see... You're going to see change. I'm not, you're going to see change from me in this channel. You're going to see change. And I even, I've been kind of preparing for this moment for a while, and I really do feel like I'm kind of breaking through finally. And even if I don't have a lot of external anecdotal evidence for this breakthrough, I know deep in my heart, I know in my soul, I know in my spirits, I know that I have broken through. I know that I have. I know that I have. And I want you to know that you have as well. You have broken through. You are the spiritual warrior. The new spiritual warrior. And we are in this together. I love you all so much. I'll see you all later on the live. Hope you all enjoy this video. And just remember that you are absolutely worthy. You always have and you always will be. Love you guys.